Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshix mainframe channel. This is Moshix. And today we're going to be looking at something that I'm sure a lot of people thought is not possible and that's VSAM on VM370. Yes, the almost 50 year old 24-bit uh, version of VM370 that we can legally use on top of Hercules is able to create and modify and use and read and write VSAM datasets um, just as you could on uh, on MBS 3.8 and uh, Professor René Ferland who has been the guest speaker for the previous two videos is going to show us how to do it. Uh, his previous two videos are highly uh, liked by the community and already uh, his latest video, the one on uh, making COBOL and PL1 compiler work on DOS VS under VM370 has already uh, created some reaction. Uh, some people uh, sent some emails to me showing how they're making DOS VS COBOL work uh, in their environment and so I know that a lot of people appreciate his videos. Thank you again, Rene. So, uh, uh, VM VSAM is such an important component of the mainframe environment uh, that we should look at it again. I have a video here called M25 working with VSAM, IBM VSAM JCL, job control language, uh, it's M25. In fact, I found some people on YouTube actually copied my video, which is fine because I guess um, uh, plagiarism is the most sincere form of flattery, and so thank you. And there's also some other videos like this by uh, some person here explaining VSAM. So you should, if before we get into uh, Professor René Ferland's video, I just want to I just want to remind people just very briefly what VSAM is. VSAM is at its basic form, it's just a, an access method. In the IBM language, access method means uh, it's API um, or a library that you can call. And VSAM is, is a structure also that resides on disk to store data. And it provides several ways to very efficiently uh, write and read data, um, either indexed or non-indexed. It's And it's pervasively used through all the IBM mainframe operating system uh, systems. Uh, so MVS and uh, OS 390, ZOS, DOS VS, they store a lot of the system data on vSAM. One very basic example is the paging data sets on which ZOS or MVS 3.8 uh, write mer virtual memory pages to and from are actually vSAM data sets. And so this shows you how tightly woven into the operating system fabric uh, vSAM is. I mean, paging is such a very core, very low, um, so close to the iron. Um, and if already at that level we have vSAM usage, that means that vSAM is really part of the operating system. Um, and of course also uh, Oracle, DB2, all those other databases, they use vSAM at its basic structure to store data and the redo logs and the transaction logs and uh, and all that kind of stuff. So vSAM is kind of important and has been important for the last, I want to say, almost 50 years. I think it was released in 1972. Um, so in MVS, of course, uh, I'm connected here to the real mainframe at the University of Leipzig, which has very graciously granted me uh, login on their VM, on the ZVM and on their ZOS for the last six months. So thank you, University of Leipzig. Um, and so I just want to show you what vSAM looks like on the mainframe. And if I just look for data, you can see these are all vSAM data sets. So for instance, the MQ series um, system uh, uses, uses vSAM, DB2 uses vSAM. Um, this is DB2 here, DB2.9. As you can see here, it's using vSAM very extensively. Um, and many other IMS uses vSAM. Everything uses vSAM. The page, as I said, page data sets are in vSAM. Many other system data sets are in vSAM. And you can sometimes recognize the vSAMs uh, because they are organized like this. So the student, this is the index, and then here's the data. So often you have the first three qualifiers be the same, and then you differentiate between index and data. It's actually very easy to create um, a vSAM data sets on MVS and DOS VS and you have the videos here to go look how to find that out. Now what Professor René Ferland is going to show us uh, very soon is how to actually have VM370 which is the only um, public domain mainframe operating system time sharing public uh, 
public domain mainframe operating system we have available, it's in 24-bit, is actually also able to create and read and write to from um, from uh, vSAN data sets. And in fact, you can move over a vSAN data set from MVS and then read it with with an, a program on VM370. And so uh, this is a very interesting topic. Um, and I hope you're going to have fun watching René Ferland, Professor René Ferland, uh, show how to do it in his very unique and very likable way. Over to you, René. Hello everyone, this is René from Montreal and today I'd like to talk about vSAM on VM370. Now for the sake of this video, I will assume that you know a little about vSAM, maybe that you use it on MVS, something like that, and you want to know how to do it on VM370. If you don't know anything about vSAM, no idea what it is, you need to read some stuff before watching this video. So a good place to start is probably the website of uh, Jay Mosley. That's where I started myself. You know, I'm not a, a mainframer at all. And on this website, there's a, this guy is amazing and he has a lot of stuff on his website. And there is a tutorial on VSAM right here. And it's a very good place to start. It's gonna explain things progressively, very easily. It's easy to read, it's easy to understand. And let's assume now that you have read this, that you have read more about vSAM, maybe that you have tried it on MVS, that you explore this stuff, and you would like to know now how to do it, or how to do the same stuff on VM. Now you're ready for this video. And actually there are gonna be two videos, <clears throat> I think, because I would like to make shorter videos now. The last one was pretty long. Uh, so in this one, what I would like to explain is a little bit about uh, access method services. Uh, so that's the, uh, the basic uh, data management of uh, vSAM catalogs and vSAM clusters and stuff like that. And then in a second video, I will explain how you can, given a cluster, how you can perform input-output operation on this cluster from a COBOL program or a PL1 program. Okay, so programming with vSAM is for another video. For the moment, it's just about, you know, creating the environment to store data sets, vSAM data sets, and create clusters and manage clusters and stuff like that, okay? On VM370, of course. So let's do that, and I will use the Moshix Cloud 6-pack to do it. So <clears throat> I will first log on to it. Log on. Voila. Password. I think I am alone. Query names. Yeah, that's it. Now, <clears throat> first things first. VSAM data sets cannot be stored on a CMS minidisc. Okay. I don't know about today, to be honest, I never tried, but I know that for VM370 it's impossible to store a VSAM data set on a CMS minidisc. What it means is that we need minidisc in OS format, or we need a DASD in OS format, which we have link or connected to our virtual machine to store vSAM data sets. Okay, so typically at home if you have downloaded this uh, <clears throat> the six pack from Dave Wade the site, you might have you know the beta version 1.3, there will be a CMS user virtual machine with several mini disks and you may choose one of them to initialize an OS format and store vSAM data sets on it. So, so that's you could that's the thing you could do at home on your own system. Over here on the cloud, I have a few mini disks, but not that many. Query disk, I have three. And they are filled, maybe not that much, but I have many files on them and I would like to keep them there. So for the sake of this video, what I'm going to do, I'm going to create myself a temporary mini disk, and I'm going to use it to store the same data sets. But at home, you should 
not use a temporary mini disc but a permanent mini disc or a DASD if you want to store your vSAM data sets and keep them between sessions okay so first thing first thing to do is to create the DASD or the mini disc so I'm gonna use the define command temporary 3350 on this address and let's say 15 cylinders now the DASD is there you can see uh, it's not on user 01 because it's a temporary mini, mini disk and it used the temporary space of CP for that purpose. Okay, of course, I cannot access this guy right away, like this, for example, because it's not a CMS mini disk and I don't want to format it either in CMS format because it's not the proper format for VSAN data sets. What I want to do is initialize this DASD or this mini disk in OS format okay and for that I'm gonna use a utility called IBC DASDI that's actually a MVS utility but it has been ported on VM370 as a standalone program that you punch in the card reader and you IPL from the card reader and it's gonna run the program so let me show you it's IPL IBC does the IS. As you can see, it's a <coughs> program located on the CMS mini disk, and you can use it to initialize a disk, a mini disk, or a DASD for that matter, in OS format. But this program, this IBC does the I program, needs a, an input file where you're gonna tell you know how you want to initialize this uh, DASD which uh, what's the volume ID what's the, the owner of the, the DASD what's the where is located the VTOC and stuff like that you know so the uh, we need to prepare a an input file for this program I already did it <coughs> for the sake of this video so let me show you it's FER1 40 and 94 IBC has the I now you can see it's composed of a series of statements like this the first one is job then message does the def volume definition VTOC definition and they must be uh, specified in that order you know with some arrangements of them but I don't, I'm not sure if you need to align these exactly like that but I always uh, seen them like that so uh, this is what we need to to tell for example we say that it's a 3350 on 194 it's not an IPL disc it's, it has 15 cylinders that's gonna be the uh, volume ID the VTOC is gonna be located on the first track and be uh, size 4 tracks stuff like that if you want to know uh, the, the content of this, uh, how to specify this file, this specific file, you can look in this manual here, the Operator's Guide of VM370. If we go, let me see a page, the right page over here. There is a, a page 180. There is a description of the program IBC DASDI and then after that it tells you everything about these uh, statements here you see the job statement the message statement everything how to write it and what's the signification of the significant the meaning of these uh, keywords and everything so just read this to know how to prepare such a file and you're ready to initialize a DASD with uh, IBC DASDI Okay, so let me put this back over here. Now, what do I want to do? I want to punch this guy, this program, and the input into the card reader of my virtual machine, and then IPL the virtual machine from the card reader. And this will start the program, and I will execute it on this input file. So I need to punch, okay? so back here let me clear this 
First of all, I have to spool my punch to the card reader so that what I'm going to punch will go into my card reader. So let me spool uh, the punch. But I want to punch this, uh, uh, these uh, files continuously. You know, I want to prepare just one deck with it, not two decks. So I'm going to punch cunt continuously for myself. Then I'm going to punch the two files. So I'm going to punch IPL, IBC, that's the IS, without a header. And then I'm going to punch my input file. BC, that's the I. The file type in this case is not, it's a, I chose IBC, that's the I, but it's not absolutely necessary. You can choose whatever you want. And without a header. Now I have these two. I want to put this into the card reader now. Okay, so I have to spool back <coughs> my punch no continuously. And then close the sponge, the, the, not the sponge, but the punch. And by closing the sponge, the, the punch, this will create the deck into the card reader. Okay. As you can see, the punch file has been sent to the card reader of Fairland. So now I can see my stuff. Uh, query reader. Here it is. Okay. Let me uh, spool the punch off to put it in back in the, the default state and now i'm ready to ipl my uh, virtual machine from the card reader running the program that's in there okay so let me clear ipl oc that's the address of the card reader i have a running here so everything's fine i press enter another time and you can see the message from the ibc that's the i utility that's the uh, version, it's very old version. And now he's asking me to give him the input device. It's gonna be the card reader, because we punched the, uh, the specification in there. So I have to type input equal, the card reader is at 2540, located on OOC, return. Now he read my, uh, <coughs> my uh, input file and he initialized it as D and it, because I have this message and if I have CP entered and disable with state with an end of job like that everything went fine so what do I do now I just IPL CMS again <coughs> one let me clear this now I'm gonna access my mini disk on F and because it is initialized, now he's going to understand. And you can see that I have read-write access, but it's not a, C a CMS mini disk, it's an OS mini. So if I do a query disk, you can see it's different from the other one. It's an OS mini disk. Okay, so it's a mini disk in OS format. Of course, I cannot do, let's say, list file Bang, bang F like this because this is not a CMS mini disk, and I can't, I cannot read the files either with FS lists, you know, and stuff like that because it's not CMS. But anyway, what I can do is list data set F. That's gonna list the data set. Of course, for the moment there are none. Okay, but if I do list data set F with uh, the option extent. I can see my VTOC now, located at uh, track 1 of size 4, actually a pretty big VTOC for what I want to do, but anyway. So there's something on this disk, there's the VTOC, and we're going to see more in a few minutes. Okay, so now we have this mini disk. If it's a permanent mini disk, and you just uh, initialize this way, it's going to stay an OS mini disk until you reinitialize it into a CMS format, for example. <clears throat> but of course, this one will disappear when I log off because it's a temporary mini disk. And now what I want to do is prepare myself to store a VSAM cluster on this mini disk. Okay. 
So, <coughs> to store a VSAM cluster, any VSAM cluster has to be cataloged. Anyway, so we need first a catalog, and then we're going to define a space, a user space on that MIDI disk to store the VSAM data sets, and then we're going to define a cluster and load it with stuff and look at what it what it's there. Okay, so first things first is to create the master catalog or catalog on this mini disk I just initialized. So for that I need the AM serve program. Okay, unfortunately there is no help on VM370 for this program. So you have to look into uh, the documentation uh, probably of VMSP if I'm right. I'm not sure there is a manual of VM370 which described but anyway uh, if you want you can take a look at the CMS user guide I think it's this one yeah and if you go there's a 237 there is a section about using access method services on VSAM under CMS, you can see, and they're going to get described this uh, AM serve command over there and tell you how to use it. So everything I tell you now, you can read easily in this manual in that section. Okay. So we want to do, uh, we want to use AM serve to create a catalog at this point. Okay. Uh, now, if we were on MVS, we would call ID cams with an exec card, and then we would give some DD statements for the sysprint, maybe, and the catalog and stuff like that. And then there would be a sysin DD where we would put instructions to define the catalog. Okay. Now, on VM370, what we have to do, we have to store these instructions that we normally put after the season DD, you know, we have to store them into a CMS file with a file type AM serve. And then we have to call the command AM serve on that file. So I have a bunch of AM serve files here. Let me show you. As you can see, there is, for example, you have this one, this is the M catalog. This is the the, uh, the file in which I'm going to define the catalog, the master catalog. Then this one is to define the user space where we're going to store VSAM data sets. And then I have one to define a cluster, the one to delete a cluster, one to load a cluster, one to print the cluster, one to print the content of the catalog. Uh, now all I have all these <coughs> in separate files i could have many of them regroup in one file but for the sake of this video i believe it's easier if i, I do everything separately one at a time so that you can see what's going on so let's take a look at m catalog am serve okay so let's type m catalog am serve as you can see, it's just one instruction where I define the master catalog, the name of which is VSAM catalog. It's going to be located on this mini disk, remember, uh, query disk. You can see the OS mini disk is Ferlin 194, so I want the catalog to be on Ferlin 194. The size of the catalog is going to be 25 tracks, you can choose whatever you want. And then we have here this file, uh, this uh, file keyword with a DD name ijsysct. Okay, so this this DD name <coughs> would normally on MVS refer to a DD statement where you tell where is the catalog on which uh, what's the it would be a a DD statement. <coughs> But here on MVS, what I uh, not on MVS, but uh, CMS, what I have to do, I have to define, uh, I have to to use that DD name to tell AM serve where is located the uh, the catalog on the mini disk. Okay, because I said here that the catalog is 25 tracks of size, but where is it located on this mini disk? 
Now on MVS, I believe that once you have said, let's say that it, it has 25 tracks like that, Job Entry System, subsystem will uh, take care of locating this, uh, of finding a place on a DASD to store the master catalog by itself. But here on VM, it's not the same thing. Why? Because the access method service services, there is an OS implementation and there is a DOS implementation. And on VM, it's the DOS implementation that is used for <coughs> the uh, access method services. And on DOS, you know, on OS, Java Entry Subsystem takes care of, you know, allocating the files and finding the place on the DASD where to locate the data, the data sets. But on DOS, Power is not doing this. So each time you use a, a file or a data set on DOS, you have to tell the system where it is located on the DASD. And for this reason, over here, you have to do the same, okay? So I have to tell the system I have to tell uh, <clears throat> AM serve, you know, where to put the, the master catalog. And I will do this using this DD name, okay? But how do I do this? By using a label. Remember, on DOSVS, there is an assignment and a label. Now, the assignment is already done, but I have to define a label now. I'm going to use DLBL, define label. Which label? That's the DD name IG, IJ Sys CT, and this refers to the catalog that's going to be located on F. The name is the dataset name is VSAM catalog. That's going to be a VSAM dataset. Let's say it with a permanent label, and now I'm going to specify extent like this. And the system will ask me for the extent specification, and that's where, that's when I'm going to say where is located my master catalog. Okay, enter extent specification. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to tell on which track on this mini disk is located the the VSAM catalog. So remember, we have the the um, the VTOP located from track one, two, three, and four. So this catalog is 25 tracks of size so I'm gonna put the catalog from track 5 up to 29 so I specify the first track where it is located 5 and the size 25 one return then another return to say this is over and now I'm ready to run my <coughs> my AM serve program on the file to define my catalog okay so but before that I'm gonna spool my print to the card reader why do I do that well if I run am serve on the file it's gonna create a, a listing on the, the mini disk and I can look at the listing if I want but I can also say print this listing by default with the M the am serve command but of course this is the this is the cloud system. If I try to print, it's going to get lost in the bit bucket. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to spool the printer into my card reader to keep my output from the printer. And I can look at it with the ESF browse command. Okay, so watch what's going to happen. I'm doing AM serve on M catalog with a print. And the command went fine because I have a ready prompt empty here. And you can see that the print file has been put into my card reader. Now I can do SF browse, uh, not browse, but browse with a B. And here's the output of my uh, AM serve command. I define the master catalog and you can see the maximum condition code is zero. So my catalog has been defined and it's there on my mini disk. So let's take a look. I'm going to purge this output. Now I'm going to do a list data set uh, on F. And I can see now my <laughs> VSAM catalog. We know there's always a, 
tricky name like that, but <clears throat> each time you have this bunch of nines ending with a six, we know that's a, a master catalog. Actually, I can also list the, the catalog the, the catalog itself. So maybe AM serve list cat print SF browse. And now I see that in this catalog, there is only one entry, the one for the catalog itself for the moment. So we have a catalog on our mini disk. Let me purge this. Now I'm going to define a space, a user space, to store clusters. I recommend that you use a, a space like that because if you don't, if you do a unique allocation, you'll be forced to specify the extent each time, which is a little bit annoying. So by using a space, you avoid that problem. So you can, what we're going to do now, we're going to essentially, let's take a look now. With the extent. As you can see, there is the VTOC track 1 up to 4, and then there is the catalog track 5 up to 29. And the, the remaining tracks we're going to use for the space, okay, so that the whole DASD is dedicated to vSAM data sets and we can store <coughs> cluster on it without having to specify anymore the extent, okay. So, 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 so. I want to define a space, so I have uh, an input file for that. And serve. Define space. It's going to be located on that volume. That's the number of a track. And again, we have a DD name, so I have to <coughs> uh, have to enter a DLBL command again with an extent specification. Okay. So that is going to know where to put the uh, the space file. So that's what I'm going to do. DLBL. That's IJSYS01. IJSYS01. This refers to a, a data set on F. The name is, uh, let's say it's VSAM space. I think it's not that important, but anyway, let's call it this way. And it's going to be a VSAM data set. And I'm going to tell the extent. And now he wants the extent specifications. So the first cylinder is occupied by the VTOC and the catalog. So let's use the, the 14 cylinders, the remaining 14 cylinders for the space. So let's start at 30 or 420, like this. And then AM serve and space print. Good, SF browse, condition code zero, so our space has been defined, let's go OK, purge, let's take a look, here it is, let's take a look with the extent, and everything is fine, so we have the, the VTOP from track one to four, the catalog from track 5 to 29 and the space from track 20, uh, 30 up to 449 okay with size 4 25 and 420 like we specified so now the DASD is ready to for us to put clusters in there <coughs> so I want to define a key sequence cluster and I'm going to use that uh, key sequence cluster in the next video. So I have a, a again uh, an input file for this. Okay. So we'll define ksds and serve. Now I use the define cluster. The name will be tests.ksds. It's going to be located on this mini disk. And as you can see now, it's going to be uh, indexed. And there is no unique allocation, so there, this will be uh, stored into the space we just defined. And as you can see, there is no uh, DD name. We don't need that because uh, AMSER will be uh, will handle the situation. So, okay. So let's run this. 
am serve define ksds print. Let's take a look at the output. Condition code is zero, so we have the cluster defined. It's empty for the moment. Of course, if I do a list data set like this, I won't see my cluster because it's inside this user space. So I need to list the catalog to see it. So maybe am serve list cat print sf browse. Now I can see the catalog and the cluster I just defined. Okay, so everything is fine. It's empty for the moment. I need to fill this <coughs> cluster with uh, records and later in the uh, PL1 and COBOL program and I will uh, read these uh, records and print the records and change them and do all kinds of stuff. Okay, so let's purge this. So I need to uh, load my cluster. And to load a cluster we use the repro command. So I have again an input file for this. Uh, now there's the repro command and you have two parameters, the in file, the input file, and the output file. So the output file here is the vSAM cluster and the input file will be an, a CMS, a CMS uh, file. Okay, so I have to specify these things here. I'll come back on on this uh, in a few minutes but as you can see there is a DD name here for the input file the DD name is sec and there is also a DD name for the output file the cluster which is KSDS so since I have two DD names I have to uh, define two labels one for the sequential file and one for the cluster that's the uh, the necessity of that repro command anyway. So let's take uh, the first file, the sequential file. It's over there. Let me show you test data. As you can see, that's the input file. Maybe we type it so you can see it. So these are records. First part here is the key, and that's the content of the record. So HT like this. Uh, so I need a DLBL for this. Okay, so DLBL sec. This file is located on mini disk A, and it's not an OS mini disk. It's a CMS mini disk. So I will, I will not say DSM. DSM is for OS mini disk. I will say CMS, and then the name of the file. Test data. And that's it. And for the cluster, uh, it was KSDS. It's located on F. Now this is an OS mini disk, so I use DSN. And the name is TESS KSDS. And it's a VSAM data set. I don't have to specify the extent. And normally I should now be ready to run my <coughs> load my repro command so am serve ldksds print good sf browse so we process a hundred records the condition code is zero so now this cluster is full of records let's purge this and let's take a look at the records to be sure that we have properly uh, loaded the, the, the cluster. So again, I have this print KSDS file over here. This is just a print command with, again, a DD name. But fortunately for us, the DD name, we, the DLBL, the label we define is still there. If you want to look at the, the label available, you just type DLBL like this. It's gonna list the whole thing. So we can see the catalog here. It's permanent. The, the space, the label for the space is still there. And we have the label for the uh, sequential data set and the label for the cluster. So since we have the label KSDS here, 
AM serve will know about it, so I can run immediately this command now. AM serve print ksds. And then I take a look. And I can see that my data set has been properly uh, loaded. So now it's ready for me to use it in a COBOL or a PL1 program. Okay. Uh, purge. So I guess that's it for the moment. Essentially, I showed you that <coughs> you need first to initialize a mini disk or a disk in OS format. You need to look at this uh, manual here. Uh, not this one, sorry. Uh, this one, I believe. No, not this one either. <laughs> no, the operator's guide here. So you need to look at this to learn how to initialize a DASD in OS format. Uh, if you use a, a complete DASD that you add to your system, maybe you can use the DASD load command utility of Hercules to initialize your disk anyway. But uh, <clears throat> here it is. And after that, once you have this uh, mini disk in OS format, like this, you need to create a catalog on it and a user space to store your vSAM cluster. So I showed you how to do this for each tab. And then after that, you're ready to potentially use these clusters uh, with a COBOL program or a PL1 program like we're going to see in the next uh, video. Before I leave, maybe I I'll tell you about another thing, a few other things. There is still this manual. That's the uh, Access Method Services uh, User Guide for DOSVS. So if you want to know how to specify, you know, the, the, command, the commands in the uh, AM server file for the command in AM server as such, maybe you used uh, this manual because that's the, uh, the implementation on DOS. So it's very, very close to the OS implementation, but there are a few distinctions, a few uh, differences. So if you want to learn about it, you better le read this manual and you'll know how to do it on VM370. Uh, also, <clears throat> there's a lot of programs and uh, files that I mentioned here. All these AM serve uh, files on the uh, in my mini disk, and then also this uh, Sorry, type uh, this initialization file here, bc di Okay, so these are located on my mini disk uh, 191. And as far as I know, all my mini disks are accessible or linkable read only by any user on the cloud system. So you're most welcome to link my mini disk and examine all the files there and copy them if you want to use them on your own uh, virtual machine there's no problem there because i don't keep any sensitive or secret data on this anything that's there can be used by anyone on the system there's no danger and maybe you're going to learn from them and maybe you can teach me some stuff uh, after that if you wish okay so that's it for the moment. Next video is how to use that cluster we just defined, okay? And how can I read it or perform some I.O. operations on it from a PL1 program or a COBOL program. That's, that's more interesting, okay? Well, thank you, René. This was fascinating. I, in fact, I followed your steps and was able to recreate everything that you've done so I can vouch for um, the correctness of the steps and the and the parameter files so that works and uh, and in fact I've done it on the mainframe VM370 uh, instance we have uh, which uh, everybody can go to by can get an account for by going to moshix.dino.net uh, with your browser and filling out the form and asking for a VM370 account if you don't want to download and run your own six pack uh, the, the, the beauty of the MVS uh, 3.8 that we have uh, running 
and the publicly accessible with an account and VM 370 is that it's always on, it's always there. You can put your data there, there's backups. It's running on the Google Cloud, so it's fully backed up. Uh, it has 100% uptime. I also make my own backups uh, just in case something, some human error or something, but um, that's uh, the beauty of it. And uh, Rene Ferland and myself use it all the time, and other people use it all the time. We have about 120 users on MBS 3.8 and about VM, uh, maybe 30 users or so on VM 370 so far. It's a lot of fun, and uh, it's also more fun to work in a system where there's other users. You can message each other, you can exchange programs, you can punch files to each other, uh, etc. I almost said punch each other, um, <laughs> but uh, it's a lot of fun. And um, and uh, you know, one thing that uh, that we're waiting for now is the next video by Professor Onofrenov, where he shows we actually you where he, I think he's actually going to write a COBOL or PL1 program to read and write to those vSAM files. And as I said at the very beginning of this video, we can just take the vSAM, uh, um, back it up to tape, or or um, uh, or, or some other means, and then and then. Uh, port it over to MBS 3.8 and will work just the same. So I think this is the beauty of these operating systems, MBS, DOSVS, and BM370. They're kind of consistent with each other, even though each each one does slightly different or quite different things. I myself have become very, uh, very fond of VM370. Um, I'm discovering more and more things you can do. It's a very well developed uh, operating system and, and uh, I spend more and more time on BM370. In fact, I have I've barely spent any time on ZOS in the last uh, four or five months. And also, um, there's another gentleman, uh, gentleman in Japan with whom I've been uh, working very, very extensively over the last uh, six months or so. And we're trying working on, on building something which we're going to announce in hopefully in a few months, uh, a month or two. Uh, which is going to be, I think, revolutionary for the Hercules community. And I don't want to say too much here, but we have something very fun uh, that we're working on and we're going to be releasing for the good of the Hercules community at some point. Anyway, so this is all. Thank you again, Rene Ferland. Um, uh, excellent videos. Everybody likes them. I do too. And uh, we can't wait to get your next video. Thank you, everybody. If you like this particular video, please press on the thumbs up button. If you haven't subscribed yet to the amazing Motion Screen from channel uh, with all of the good videos from uh, Professor Rene Ferland and a few of my own, then please do so now and see you soon. Goodbye.